Hello, uh, welcome to this uh, special service of an event. It is coming to you from Cantley Methodist Church, and my name is Jonathan. Uh, we'll begin by singing the hymn, Come Thou Long Expectant Jesus. This is a season of hope. This is a season of an event. Let us pray together. Loving God, we come together as your people to worship you this day. We join with many millions around the world who are worshiping the name of Jesus. Some of us are at home, others are online, others are in a building or in an open space. We meet at a, a difficult period in our time when we are separated by a pandemic. But you are the same generous and hospitable God who loves us and welcomes us into your presence. And therefore we thank you and we praise you for your presence with us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The reading that uh, we will um, we will focus on today is found, found from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, I'll read verses 7 to 18, 7 to 18 of chapter 3 of John, of, of, of St. Luke, beg your pardon. The crowns, crowns of people came out to John to be baptized by him. You snakes, he sent to them, who told you that you could escape from the punishment God is about to send. Do those things that show that you have turned away from your sins. And don't start saying among yourselves that Abraham is your ancestor. I tell you that God can take these rocks and make it descend, descendants for Abraham. The axe is ready to cut down the trees at the roots. Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. The people asked 
what are we to do then? He answered, Whoever has two shirts, give him, give to the man who has none, and whoever has food must share it. Some tax, tax collectors came to be baptized. They asked him, Teacher, what are we to do? Don't collect more than is legal, he told them. Some soldiers also asked him, What about us? What are we to do? He said to them, Don't take money from anyone by force or accuse anyone falsely, be content with your pay. People's hopes began to rise, and they began to wonder whether John, perhaps, might be the Messiah. So John said to all of them, I am baptized you with the water, but someone is coming who is much greater than I am, I am not good enough even to untie his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He has his winnowing shovel with him to thresh out all the grain and gather the wheat into his barn, and he will burn the chaff in a fire that he never goes out. Verses 18. In many different ways, John preached the good news to the people and urged them to change their ways. As I said, uh, uh, today is a third Sunday uh, of Advent. Advent is that unique time uh, when we are invited to prepare ourselves for the birth of the Messiah. The one coming to show us and to concretely demonstrate how to live as members of the human family. In Advent, we celebrate what is called the Kairos. Kairos is that special godly moment that moment which is like no other, that moment when God chose uh, to make his abode, to, go, to make God's abode among human beings. Now, the, the opposite of Kairos in Greek is the Kronos. And the Kronos is that which happens within human history. Uh, world wars, they happen within history. Our own birthdays we celebrate within human history. Uh, Kronos where, is where we get the word chronology, uh, the tabulation of events. And Kronos is also where we get uh, the time that we wear uh, you know, on our wrists. Because time, watch, uh, tabulates time. Uh, our focus today is uh, this man called John. John is a very interesting character because in that event you might you find that in the second week of Advent we mention John and the third week we mention John. Let me make a distinction. The second week of Advent we remember John the prophet because it's in this long lineage of prophets, people who are sent to declare God's will, who are always saying, Thus is the Lord. And John is sent to be the last uh, in this lineage, but also very important in this lineage. You remember Jesus uh, saying, Of all people who are born of women, there's none greater than John. So really, this was a very special man. And in the second week of our event, we remember John, uh, the prophet. 
among other prophets, Jeremiah, Isaiah, uh, we remember John. But on the third week of Advent, which is today, we focus not so much on John the prophet, but John the forerunner, the one who comes as an advance force to announce that the Messiah is coming. Uh, we focus on John the person and his messenger, uh, and his message. This one who is sent to announce that Jesus is coming, the Messiah is just about to be born. The Gospels tell us <clears throat> that the mission of John was to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. Now that's, that's a very colloquial way of putting things. Uh, in fact, in the book of Micah 4, 6, the same is, is, is repeated uh, about, about turning the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. Simply put, is that human relationships were at such a low ebb, were so despoiled, that Jesus, that John's mission as part of the preparation for the coming of the Messiah was to uh, institute reconciliation among families and among communities. There was a lot of moral decadence and uh, John was really to clear the road, if you want me to put it that way. Uh, the Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 6 tells us that God sent a man called John who has come to tell the people about the light so that uh, all should hear and believe the, uh, and all should hear the message and believe. So this was a man who was come, who was sent to bear the light. Let me let me briefly uh, take you back in time. Imagine the, uh, that it's now uh, two thousand years ago, and you are a God-fearing Jew who lives somewhere in Palestine. And you have heard these stories of a strange man who lives out in the desert. He seemed to be a wise man, even though quite queer in the way, uh, you know, the, the way he lives. So, and, and also you have heard that he's baptizing people. Now you see, Jews, uh, did not really need baptism. Uh, what the Jews did was ritual washing, ritual washing. The people who needed to be baptized were the Gentiles, uh, foreigners, who came to the faith of the Israelites. Those were the people who needed to be baptized. But to hear that this man, this strange man, is baptizing people calling everybody to repentance and to submit to baptism. So you and a few friends, you make this uh, long journey, takes about two or three hours, and uh, you, you, you get out into the desert. What you see is a crowd of people gathered somewhere and kind of shifting around. And uh, then in that that group you can't miss a you know a strange guy who is dressed quite a, strangely. He is wearing camo skin, and uh, he has a strap leather around his waist. And uh, you have also heard these stories that he lives out there in the caves. He does not even eat the normal food. He lives on honey and uh, wild honey and locusts. That, that is his food. Among the crowd that you see, you can't miss uh, 
the Roman soldiers. Why? Because of these long spears that they carry, um, you know, shiny spears and sh a helmet and armor. Uh, you, you, you can't miss the soldiers. Another group of people that you cannot miss are the tax collectors. You cannot miss them because they are quite affluent. Therefore, even their physical appearance is different from others because they, they are kind of fat, they're big, uh, they live well, they dress well. Then, uh, well, I mean, they are religious leaders too, and the crowd, of course. All of a sudden, this man leaps to his feet and he says, you snakes, you children of snakes, who want you uh, to escape from what God is about to do, you are taken aback. Because how can a man be so rude to other people? Uh, but strangely, you want to hear him more and you want to see what he's about to do. And so you hang on every word that John teaches. His teaching is so powerful that you, you begin to wonder whether actually this could be the Messiah. The man appears to be a mind reader because even as the thought forms in your mind whether this could be the Messiah, he answers your question and he says, I baptize you with the water. But there's another one who is coming, who is going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with the fire. And he is coming to reap the harvest. He is going to separate the wheat from the chaff, you know. Uh, John's message was quite stern. It has been said that John belonged to a group of people called the Essenes, the Essenes. And these Essenes, they formed a community called the Qumran, uh, who lived out in the desert. They were an ascetic, they li lived an ascetic life out there because they wanted to separate themselves for religious reasons. Uh, as, as, as late as 1948, some manuscripts were excavated from the uh, near the Dead Sea, uh, so-called the Dead Sea Scrolls, and these were writings of uh, pieces of writings of, of this group. John knows his place. He tells us that he was not the Messiah. He was only but an announcer of the Messiah. And he had a, a message for every group. He had a message for every group. To the soldiers, he told them that uh, you must not be harsh to the people. Be nice to the people. Don't plant false evidence on them. Uh, I wish he told uh, some policemen that uh, the Kenyan police is especially known to plant uh, what is called cannabis, uh, false evidence on people, and then they accuse you that you are caught with uh, some contraband, you are caught with some drugs. Uh, don't bear false evidence to others. And then the, the tax collectors also, they said, how about us? How about us? And he said, uh, only collect that which is legal. Only collect that which is legal. You know, some people were also so confident that, you know, they were special, they were God's chosen, nothing could go wrong. The leaders, the religious leaders, the Jews, and you tell them, don't brag that you got Abraham as your ancestor. 
God can even make these stones uh, as ancestors of, uh, of uh, Abraham. I think one, what I want to do in the next one or two minutes is to ask uh, what, what, what kind of people, how do we glean the message uh, from the teaching of John? How do we know what message John was really bringing? First of all, I want to say that John, John's message for, was for everyone. His good news, the good news of the kingdom that John went, uh, came to announce before the coming of the Messiah was to everyone. Uh, whether you are a Gentile or a Jew, see these Roman soldiers were definitely Gentiles. But there's a message for them. There's a message for the religious leaders. Tells them, you know, he actually calls them brood of vipers, children of snakes. You know, you, you can't get worse than that. Religious leaders, my type, we are told, uh, don't presume on God. You must be part of the worshiping crowd you must be part of the people who really revere God it's it's, it's not it's not about the profession um, you know you see the religious leaders some of them were professional leaders and uh, their love for God was really not not, not too high and and John says no 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 uh, this message is for everybody. Now, I like what he says about uh, when the crown, when the people ask about us. And he told them, you see, the gospel, the kernel, the, the kernel of the gospel is about sharing, equitable sharing of God's resources. If you cannot share with a brother or a sister that you can see, if there are people hurting somewhere in the world, if there are people drowning in the high seas and we turn a blind eye, if there are refugees on our streets and we turn a blind eye, if there are homeless, people sleeping rough and we turn a blind eye, uh, then we don't know the gospel. Because John says as part of the pre preparation for the coming Messiah, we need um, to share that which God has given us. If you have two coats, share with the guy who doesn't have one. If you have two shoes, if you have food and somebody else doesn't have, if people are living in squalid conditions, then to demonstrate that we know the gospel, we need uh, to share. And the last thing that John insists upon is uh, repentance, metanoia, turning around. And how do we know that you have turned around? Uh, it's the way you live, your lifestyle will tell us whether you have turned around. How much do you care for the others? How much are you concerned about others? I think that's, that, that's the gospel. That's the mission of John. That's what it means to be an herald of the Messiah. To be a forerunner of the Messiah is, uh, uh, is how you live your life vis-a-vis -vis other human beings. Let us pray together. We pray to you, O God, that you comfort those who are struggling and those who mourn, especially at this difficult time uh, in our lives. We pray that you will bring healing to the suffering. Give us compassion towards those that are hurting. Families who have lost jobs and livelihoods. God, 
our Redeemer and Restorer, hear our prayer. We pray that you fill us with your love so that we would long to share it and that others would come to know you. Bring transformation into our hearts so that we would have eyes to see and ears to hear the cry of others and be moved to share what you have given us. Loving God, our Redeemer and Restorer, hear our prayer. We pray for thankful hearts where we are able to rejoice and delight in life and in you. Give us peace that comes only from you so that we will be content with everything that you have given us. Help us not to be greedy, but to be a people who share. Help us to bring peace into our families, into our country, and into your world. Loving God, our Redeemer and Restorer, hear our prayer. We pray that on God you break into our world and help us to know how to live as members of the human family. Loving God, our Redeemer and Restorer, hear our prayer. Amen. We're now going to sing uh, our last hymn, which is, Earth rejoice, Earth rejoice, our Lord is King. Uh, and this is a uh, track. Earth rejoice. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance on you and give you his grace and his peace. Amen.